Welcome back, everyone. This is day eight of 10. Today, we're going to talk about some uh, recording and some equipment. Uh, we're going to keep it rather simple and light today because this can get quite extensive. So the flute that I was just playing, I'm going to try to put some comments in the chat today while we go. I've prepared a little uh, some things because I want to send you some links today to some of the uh, equipment that I'm using. The flute that I was playing uh, was made by Miguel Medina of Singing Tree Flutes. Uh, this is actually a flute that we collaborated on, uh, I believe, last year or year before. It's, uh, the lower flute is in the key of E as an echo. The higher flute is in the key of B as in boy. And uh, this is a Mayan harmony flute, has three playing holes on the top for each one of the chambers uh, and one thumb hole in the back. Okay, so let's hear where you're tuning in from. I see the chat is now becoming alive. Uh, it's good to see some of you, good to see all of you that are tuning in here. Um, I know several of you aren't making every day. That's totally fine. We're going to keep these up for replay so you can watch them at any time. Uh, Richard asked, what's that flute? Hi, David Weber. Uh, hi, Christine. Dennis. Yeah, doing a 10 day uh, or a live stream every day for 10 days um, is quite a bit, but we're doing good. Thanks for that. Tommy, good to see you. Martin, Bernard, Bob, Jerry, Glenda. Wonderful. Thank you, guys. Hey, so while you're waiting, those of you uh, on Facebook, go ahead and share this. Share this in a group that you belong to. Uh, share it into some of the flute groups if you think this would help. This is a really big topic, a really big conversation that I have a lot with students. We handle an email, so this is really, um, I want to keep things concise today and share these resources with you. I will be sharing my screen for a resource that is available for free for you to download. Let me go ahead and grab that and drop that in the chat. I'll also come back in the comment section of YouTube later to put this um, to put this back there. Here we go. Uh, so this is my equipment guide. I'm going to be showing you a couple of pages inside, totally free for you to download. You get on my email newsletter, which is also where we announce sales, upcoming um, events. Um, I send out a Sunday morning newsletter uh, once a week. If you're a Horizons Plus member, you get a weekly email from me on Wednesdays as well. Um, if you're not getting those emails and you are a member, please let me know. We need to make sure that... Um, we got you all taken care of. Awesome. Seeing some more in the chat. Thank you. It's so good uh, to see you guys. Well, hey, let's get started. We're going to talk about the equipment that you need for recording. Um, and those of you that are here live, let me know if you're recording at home already. Um, and as we have this conversation, I'll keep an eye on the chat and do the best that I can uh, to answer questions as they come up. Remember, tomorrow is our Ask Me Anything relating to the flute. Uh, so be sure to email those to us at learning at johnnylipfordmusic.com. Let's dive in. The first thing that you're going to need uh, is a microphone. Um, and microphones can be kind of um, tricky. Um, I'm going to send you also a link in the chat to a blog that I wrote for the three, of three affordable... Sorry about the motorcycle. He usually comes by here about this time of day. I thought he'd already come. The three most affordable, uh, good quality microphones. I am using one of those. It is a condenser microphone. It's called an Audio Technica AT2020. And uh, we'll ex I'll explain a little bit what, cardi or what uh, condenser and dynamic, the difference between those two microphones are. I use a condenser microphone because it picks up more of the flute. But we're also going to talk about environment that you record in. So a condenser microphone may not be conducive to what you're doing uh, when it comes to recording in your environment. So I think it might be best if we go ahead and jump over to the flow chart. Now this is inside of the, uh, sorry about that, those are my notes. This is inside of that chart or inside that resource that I'm gonna give you. So you're going to need a microphone. You're either going to need a cardio or a condenser microphone or a 
uh, dynamic microphone. Now let me let me just go up here for a second and explain the difference between these two microphones. A really great dynamic microphone that's used across the stages of the world are Shure brand S H U R E SM58 or SM57. They are pretty much the same microphone and these things are indestructible. They run somewhere around $100 for, uh, for a microphone. I recommend getting one uh, that has an on-off switch, especially if you plan to do any kind of performing outside in a stage environment. When you're taking a break, you wanna be able to turn it off at the microphone rather than having to turn your volume down or muting your channel on your um, mixer or PA. Anyway, so dynamic microphones are used on stages because they don't pick up as much. You really have to be close to them to pick up. This condenser microphone, on the other hand, is uh, it picks up nuances uh, far better than a dynamic microphone. And I'm keeping this in layman terms. You can always go do more research on uh, the difference between these, but you can hear my hands uh, rubbing together. Uh, little things and but the thing about a condenser microphone too is when you're recording a flute it may pick up the uh, slaps of your fingers on the flute I'm being a little aggressive there just to give you um, an idea also inhales that you make it'll pick that up as well and any kind of lip smacking that you do while you're um, playing your flute <laughs> so there's different patterns I won't go too much into this today um, you will need to become a little bit more um, aware of cables that you might need. Um, and so cables are important. Uh, XLR cables are universally known as just microphone cables. There's also quarter inch cables. These are typically used for speakers, guitars, uh, things like that. You may have to get an adapter depending on the equipment that you get. And we also need to bring up USB. Uh, USB is a, an evolving technology and hardware, um, and I know some of you are using uh, USB microphones to record with. I'll address that as well. And then the 3.5 millimeter, uh, this is like what your auxiliary cable might be or your headphone jack, uh, that's the size. Let's move on down here. So this is the flow chart that we're after. These are the components that you need to get set up and start recording at home. You need a microphone and something to hold it. I have a couple of desk mounts that I use. I've also used floor stands. I have those for live gigging. So from there, you're going to connect that XLR cable into your interface. The interface is what's going to be between your microphone and your computer. And this is where you're going to be able to plug in your microphone and then you'll have a separate cable to go from the interface to your computer. Usually it goes in via USB. Some microphones that you're finding today, um, like the, uh, I think Catherine mentioned in the chat, the Blue Yeti uh, connects directly to USB and you bypass the interface. So you don't have to have an interface. Something to consider though, um, I know that many of the uh, not Bluetooth, uh, USB microphones. They will have some sort of um, some sort of volume control on them, and perhaps depending on the one that you have, will have an app or a piece of uh, software that you can also control some of those things. The reason I like to use an interface is it's a little more versatile. I can also plug in, depending on the interface, like this one shown, is an audio box. Um, uh, PreSonus audio box and it's got two inputs here. Interfaces come with one, two or more um, inputs. These work as both XLR and quarter inch. You can plug those in and that's found pretty standard on some of these interfaces for versatility. I will share with you a really good um, package that you can get all of this stuff um, for under $300. I'll talk about that in a second. So microphone to cable to interface, okay? Then you're gonna need that cord, something to go from, and, and whatever interface you buy, you need to know what type of USB port is coming out of this that you can plug into your computer, 
okay? And so then you're gonna plug that into your laptop or your uh, computer, okay? This is the basis of the materials that you need, okay? You can record, I used to record um, several um, things at home with a Shure SM58 because uh, in our old house, I was right across from the utility room which housed the water heater and the furnace and the AC unit and that a condenser microphone would pick that up. It can pick up the hum of a refrigerator or dogs walking across a wood floor uh, in the other room, which sometimes it does. So I have to record when my dogs are feeling lazy. Um, so when you get this equipment, so you can record with an SM58, which can also be used for live sound. And I wanna show you something here. I've gotten lots of questions on, hey, Johnny, how do you do this? How do you, you know, talk normal like this and then how do you have that pretty reverb well it's a piece of equipment that is on my floor and it's set up like as if i were at a live gig we just kind of trade out some of the pieces so live gig setup for example is a lot like recording you have a microphone and a stand and xlr cable but instead of going directly from your xlr cable into your you know, PA or your mixer or anything, you want to go into an effects pedal. So when you go into an effects pedal like this, and I'll share the link to the ones that I'm showing you, um, when you go into that effects pedal, actually, let me grab that link right now. This is, oh shoot, hold on. <laughs> You're seeing all my notes. Um, and that's fine. Uh, so this is the reverb pedal that I have. And let me drop this into the chat. This is a TC Helicon a voice tone reverb pedal. It only does uh, reverb. When you see guitarists play on stage, they have a suitcase full of pedals. And oftentimes they do different things, like one will be for chorus, one will be for distortion, one will be, and they'll have a chain there. I like to keep things super simple. You can chain these, meaning you can connect more than one pedal together. Um, what I really like about this is it's activated by my foot and it's a vocal pedal. So one of the benefits to this is, like I mentioned, most pedals are uh, for guitars. And so they're gonna have a quarter inch input, that cable that I showed you earlier, that looks like a, a big uh, auxiliary cable cord. Um, you would have to convert that to uh, fit into that uh, pedal. Whereas this particular one has XLR, uh, it's natively XLR, so I can use my mic cables to plug in and go out. So I have the same chain right here, and then this cord, instead of going to the cube, would then go into my interface. That's the only difference in that. When you are recording though, I want to come off of screen share. When you are recording though, you don't want to record with this effects pedal engaged. Anytime I'm doing a recording project, I will unhook this effects pedal and I will go directly mic into interface. You don't want to record with this reverb turned on. Reverb is something that you want to do in post-production. Um, there is a way that, uh, depending on your DAW, so your recording program, and I'm going to give you a list of those that you can consider as well. Depending on the um, DAW that you have, most of them will enable to where you can hear uh, through your headphones while you're playing the reverb, but it's actually recording dry, and you can manipulate the delay, echo, reverb, any of those things later in post-production. You can turn it off to where your flute is dry. What the, what the DAW is actually capturing and recording is a dry flute signal, okay? If you have reverb on a flute like I have with this and I'm recording with that reverb into the program, it's gonna make editing that a nightmare um, because reverb has a tail on it and it's gonna continue to swell and then fade, okay? And if I wanna chop that phrase, a lot of times, the reverb isn't done doing what it's doing before we start the next phrase. And so that's the reason why I bring that up. So the, 
The other thing that you'll need though too is a good set of headphones. Um, I have um, both Shure headphones and um, Audio-Technica. There's several other bland, uh, brands that you can consider. There are some listed in that uh, equipment guide for you as well. And you don't necessarily want to find the cheapest set of headphones. Don't use earbuds because they'll bleed through. The, the reason we get these big, puffy, squishy headphones is so that sound doesn't escape them to go back into the microphone if you're recording to a backing track. So you're isolating the sound and your microphone is only picking up what you're doing with the flute or your other instrument, whatever you're intending it to pick up, and not the room noise the, and, and the sound escaping your headphones going back in to, um, into the, the microphone. So let me share with you um, a couple more things, a couple of links. Uh, we've talked about the microphone, okay? the interface, which this is a really great bundle. Um, I've recommended this to um, folks that have emailed and those um, that are looking to record uh, and some students. This has a bundle. Uh, so this has an interface, the cable, headphones, a condenser microphone, and an interface. Uh, so this has everything in one and it's just shy of 300 bucks, which is awesome if you're unsure of what you're looking, uh, how much recording you're going to actually be doing. I want to talk about the recording program. I get a lot of questions about, well, what program do you use? I started out with, I'm a Mac user. Um, I had a foot in both worlds for a while, but I've since gone pretty much over to Mac uh, exclusively. I started out with GarageBand, which is a free program, a free recording program that comes on, um, comes on most Macs, even iPads and iPhones. You can upgrade that GarageBand um, you can upgrade the app and get a couple of extra features. I think I, I did that in the past. I'm not sure of what their current uh, thing is. So I've upgraded from GarageBand to Logic Pro. Logic Pro is uh, the bigger brother of, um, of GarageBand. It's hard for me to type <laughs> and talk at the same time. Uh, let's talk about some of the other ones though. Uh, there uh, is also Audacity. This is great for um, getting your feet wet with a recording program. Um, Audacity is free to download. Um, it's pretty easy to navigate. Um, you, I don't think you'll be able to use MIDI with that. Um, GarageBand, if you're an Apple user, that is a really great and powerful program for you. Um, there's also Cubase, uh, is also a free program, as well as Reaper. Um, so these are four different um, DAWs or recording programs that you might consider as you go through uh, looking at this equipment and setting yourself up. So we just breeze through that really quickly. Um, I want to make sure that I answer any questions um, that have come up. Again, get that, um, that free download for this uh, recording guide. It'll show you all the equipment. Um, and one thing that I'm doing too, my intent for this was, was to go a little deeper, but I didn't want to spend more than an, you know, half an hour on this. And what I wanted to show you would have been over an hour. And I, I sat one morning and I looked at my desk and under my desk and behind my desk of the things that are currently here that I am using. Okay. And everything from the desk mount uh, stands, the arms, to the USB drivers, to the speakers, to the light, everything. And it got overwhelming. And so I'm still putting that resource uh, together. And um, I will follow up with this with going through my entire list of uh uh, resources uh, and equipment. I get a lot of questions on, you know, what pedal, how is this hooked up, what interface. Oh, that's the other thing that I wanted to share with you. Um, the interface that I use is not the one in the bundle that I shared the link with. Uh, it's not the Focusrite. 
the one that I am using is called, um, and I'll tell you why I decided on this one. It's called a Lewitt Connect 6 USB interface. I'm going to drop a link here in the chat for you as well. And there you go. Um, it's a uh, Lewitt Connect 6. Uh, what this is, it's both a piece of hardware and software. So I was able to get rid of a program called Loopback, which would route audio in your system to use like on um, Zoom or like I'm doing right now. I could play something on my computer and it would come through for you and for me. Um, with the Lewitt Connect 6, I have a digital um, mixer basically on my computer that I can also route audio um, and bring in other things as well. So it's a piece of hardware on my desk and a piece of software on my computer so I can move those things around. So it's one piece of equipment anytime that I can get one thing to do multiple things there are less hiccups and less uh, chances of it um, having a hiccup in the system. Weber adds that Logic Pro is also on iPad now. I think I saw that announcement a few months ago. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, and Dennis asks, if time permits, could you tell us about the lighting system you're using? It's not so much the lighting system as it is the program that I'm using uh, to actually do most of my video content. Um, what I have in my room right now is I've got two lights in the corner of the room, just lamps. Um, regular 60 watt bulbs in front of me behind the camera is a ring light uh, you know you can pick those up for less than twenty dollars and I've got two windows over here on the side but the thing that makes the video um, so great is the camera and the program that I'm using so I'm using a Canon uh, this is part of the um, part of the equipment list that I wanted to go through I'm using a Canon M200, EOS M200, um, and it's got a 22 millimeter lens on it, which that's what brings me sharp and everything else around me in the distance um, a little blurry. So it puts me front and center. And that's also helping, it's got autofocus on it. So if I come up close, it'll focus on uh, whatever it is. So we can bring this up, see that? Okay, and then the program that I'm using to make most of my YouTube shorts and all that other, I've got another piece of hardware here. It's called Ecamm Live. It's a Mac only um, uh, software um, and it's for video. Um, a lot of folks are using this when they're doing like, um, I forget the right terminology for it, like newscasters where you can bring other people on. I use it very minimally. It's a very powerful program. I do pay annually for it. Um, I'm not sure if they have a free version of this, but using the capture card out of USB to go into the camera, that's bringing high resolution and um, not just using a standard webcam. All of that will be covered later in um, as I put my full equipment list on my website, it will likely be in a blog format rather than a video format, just because there is so much to, um, to go through. Um, and so it'll be a downloadable uh, resource as well. Well, this was a lot to go through. Um, and if questions come up about this, feel free uh, to reach out. We do have Q and A's like this. Um, well, actually they're more interactive because they're on Zoom inside Horizons Plus. We've done a couple on recording and equipment and things like that um, as part of our programming, uh, normal programming with Horizons Plus. And if you are unfamiliar with Horizons Plus, um, Horizons is the flute school that I started back in 2020 online. We do have some in-person events. We have one coming up in September. You don't have to be a member uh, to come to that. Um, but if you want to become a member of Horizons Plus right now until the 10th, so we're running out of days here, we have reduced our six and 12 month plans 
back to founders rates, which for six months, it's 149. For a year of Horizons Plus, it's 299. And the, um, the benefit of that is you get access to courses, live and recorded Q&A sessions, live and recorded workshops that we have other guest instructors come in, professionals of different things. Um, we also have flute circles. Uh, we had uh, one this morning um, on Zoom as well. So Horizons Plus has a lot to offer you if you're looking to grow and expand, but also if you're looking just to have a sense of community, a sense of direction, um, and just being able to get together and share the music of the flute. I know several of us don't have local flute circles in our community or anyone in our community that plays. This is a really great opportunity for you. Tiana asks um, this, and then I'll, I'll play you guys out to keep these live streams a little more digestible um, in the future. Do you always record yourself or do you have someone to help with the video recordings? The stuff I do right here, uh, the stuff that you see produced right here, like on YouTube and stuff, this is all me. I've got some automation and equipment to help with that. Um, but when we do things like music videos, um, those types of things outside of this environment, um, I usually have help with. Maria helps, uh, helps me out and then occasionally we'll have um, a hired videographer to help as well. So um, thank you guys uh, for being here today. I hope this has been helpful. I know it seems like a crash course, uh, but I thought I'd just play a little music for you. Um, and again, if you have questions about what we went over today, um, or if you have a question about joining Horizons Plus, um, you can feel free to reach us at learning at johnnylipfordmusic.com. Uh, Tiana, you're very welcome. Thank you for the info. We appreciate you and Horizons Rocks. Thank you so much. Friends, I'm going to play a little music for you. Hope you don't mind. Uh, this flute is a flute made by JP Gomez of Heart Song Flutes. It's in the key of D. And what I play for you will be whatever comes out of the flute. Thanks for being here today. Thank you so much, guys. Remember, we've got two more live streams. Tomorrow, we're going to uh, do an Ask Me Anything. So bring your questions or submit them early so I'm a little more prepared. Learning at johnnylipfordmusic.com. Or, oh, and, not or, and on the 10th, day after tomorrow, 
we're going to do um, a jam. We're going to do a jam session. So it could be really fun. It could be a train wreck. I'm leaning for fun. So I hope you'll join me for that. And friends, with that, I bid you all farewell. I'll see you tomorrow.